Hey guys, Dane from AWE. Today we're gonna to be doing an exhaust installation on this G20 M340i. Make sure you stick around to the end so you don't miss any important details. We're gonna start off with removing the factory exhaust, followed up by installing the AWE exhaust suite, and then some helpful tips and tricks to get that fitment perfect. Let's get started. Before getting started on the installation, we always like to lay the system out on the floor to get a good idea of how everything looks. Grab your parts list, verify everything's accounted for. We're doing our install on a non-res touring with quad tips, so your system will look different if you've chosen a different option. Now that we've laid out all the AWE exhaust components and verified them with the parts list, it's time to get started removing the factory exhaust. First things first, let's get the car into Sport Plus mode and ensure the exhaust valve is in the open position. Doing so will allow the AWE exhaust valve simulator to be installed smoothly. Now that we've unplugged the valve in the open position, we can start getting ready to remove the factory motor. Underneath the car, you'll be able to see that the spring is in the correct position, pointing upwards towards the heat shield. Up next, we'll remove the valve motor and get it installed on the AWE supplied valve simulator bracket. Now that we've got the valve motor removed from the car in the open position, it's time to install it into the AWE supplied valve simulator bracket. First thing we want to do is take the pin and install that into the machine groove in the bracket. Up next, we want to take the valve motor and the heat shield and drop that in place. We want to make sure that when you do this, the valve motor engages the pin and the U-shaped bracket so that it operates correctly when it's installed in the car. Finally, we'll take the factory bolts, install them into the bracket, and snug everything down. Before we fully tighten these bolts, you want to make sure that the valve motor is fully centered inside the bracket and doesn't rub on the bore machined into the bracket itself. With the installation of the valve motor simulator complete, we're gonna move on to removing the factory exhaust. First part we wanna tackle is the factory tips. We're gonna remove them with these two bolts here. Up next, we need to remove the center brace, held in place by 12 bolts. Let's get started. With the center brace removed, we can now move forward and remove the nut that holds the front pipe to the hanger and loosen the clamp that holds the front pipe to the catalytic converter. Now that we have everything loosened up front, let's tackle this hanger here. Best thing to do is get a little lubrication on this, make that rubber slide off easy. If you don't have a hanger removal tool, a simple pry bar also does the job. The final step in removing the OE exhaust is to remove the hanger nuts holding the rear hangers in place. Grab a buddy, because the system is pretty heavy and he can help you hold the front while you're doing this. You want to lower the back, 
and then slowly wiggle and push towards the rear of the car to release it from the front section. Now that we have the factory exhaust removed, it's time to get started installing the AWE system. Up first, we're gonna do the front pipe and the OE adapter. I have this pre-installed on the assembly right now just to make installation on the vehicle a little easier. We're gonna get some clamps on this and get it up in the car. With the front section in place, you can reinstall the factory nut on the front hanger. With the 85 millimeter clamp up here by the factory cat and the three and a half inch clamp here by the merge, you wanna make sure both sections are fully bottom to give you a secure fit on the car. You wanna rotate these clamps so they're pointing towards the passenger side so they're in the correct orientation. Before you snug down the clamp, you wanna get it in the proper position. You always like to have the clamp overhanging the end of the slip fit, roughly a 16th of an inch. This will make sure it fully tightens down on the joint later on. Repeat the same steps back here by the merge. Now with everything snugged up, we can do a quick check, to make sure we're all pointing in the right direction. You wanna make sure you have at least a finger thickness of space between the top of the clamp and the heat shield here. And doing so, you can adjust this towards the driver's side to get you more or less clearance, depending on what you need. Now that we have the front section all snugged up, it's time to move back to the mid tubes. Both these tubes are exactly the same driver and passenger. Let's get them installed. With the mid tubes in place, you wanna make sure the bends are pointing up and into the heat shield in roughly this orientation. Additionally, you want to make sure both clamps are pointing towards the passenger side to allow you the best clearance on the chassis of the vehicle. Also, you want to make sure the clamps are overlapping the end of the tube just slightly so you have the best clamping force possible. At this point, we're going to be reinstalling the factory cross brace. When you get this up in place, don't worry if the tubes are touching it. We're going to be readjusting the system later. Moving further back, we're ready to install our axle tubes. Just so you know, the passenger side has a hanger on it, so make sure that goes in the right spot. If you've chosen a resonated touring system or a track system, you'll see resonators right here in these tubes. We'll grab our three inch clamps and get this installed on the car. Make sure the clamps point towards the passenger side, just like the mid tubes, and we'll be in great shape. Just like when we remove the factory exhaust, you're gonna to wanna to spray a little lubrication on the rubber hanger. This will help the hanger bar slide into the rubber easily. Just like on the passenger side, we're gonna do the same thing on the driver's side with the axle tubes. Clamp goes on the slip bit first, then we'll get it up installed in the car. With both tubes up in place, we can snug the clamp. Up next, we'll be installing our touring rear section. Again, if you have a track system, this would be a straight pipe. So we're gonna make sure our clamp's in place and get this installed over the axle tubes. With that installed, grab the factory mount and slide it over the hanger bar and get it up in place using the factory hardware. Get everything snugged in place and we'll do the same thing on the passenger side. Go ahead and grab your rear section brace and get this loosely installed on the system. We'll do all the final tightening later. With the rear section brace snugged down, we're gonna grab our tip outlets and install them on the rear sections. We're doing a quad tip install, but if you have the OE tip option, it would just be a single pipe.
Just like on the passenger side, make sure your clamp's in place and install your tip section. Now that we have all the major components in place, we're ready to do our final tightening. We left the tips off for now just to make sure nothing gets damaged when we're moving around the tubes. We'll get started at the front and work our way back. Starting with the front section, rotate the tubes up close to the heat shield. This will give you the most amount of clearance around the chassis brace. At that point, you can then tighten down the 85 mil clamp and the three and a half inch clamp to lock everything in place. Don't forget to tighten down the hanger bolt as well. Moving further back, we can also adjust our mid pipes. Again, you want these to be pointing up into the heat shield like we talked about before. Moving further back, we can lock down our axle tube. We'll start on the passenger side. We want to make sure that our hanger bar is parallel with the ground. That'll give you a good indicator that everything is sitting correctly. Do the same thing on the driver's side, get this one locked in place as well. Now with the axle tubes locked down, we can finalize the rear sections. Push these up against the heat shield and fully tighten the bolt. With the rear sections fully tightened, we can now lock down the center brace. Now that we've gotten everything locked down to the rear section, it's a good idea to take a step back and see how everything's fitting. I like to look at the rear brace, make sure that's nice and level, and that the cans have a gentle upward angle. Once you're happy with the way everything's looking, we can now finalize the tip insulation. When installing AWE tips on your vehicle, it's important to apply some anti-seize to the threads. Doing so prevents them from galling and allows the clamp to reach its proper torque. When installing the clamp, please only use hand tools to tighten the bolt. Using power tools will damage the threads. Now that we have the clamp installed on the tip, it's time to get it onto the merge section. We'll get both tips in place and then snug the clamps down. Again, make sure you use hand tools to tighten these clamps. Using power tools could damage them. Now that the tips are snug down, we can adjust our merge and get it into the final position. With this design, you have up and down and left and right adjustability so you can get it perfectly dialed in. Just like on the driver's side, we'll get the passenger tips up in place and snug the clamps down. Again, using hand tools is important. Using any power tools could break the bolts. With the both tips snugged up, we can now finalize the insulation of the merge. With the tip merges locked in place, it's now time to install the valve simulator bracket. We'll remove these three bolts here and pop this wiring harness out of the heat shield. Let's get started. With the bolts removed, we can gently pull the heat shield forward and thread the wiring harness up and through the opening. Reach up and around, grab it, and thread it back down. This will allow us to plug the valve motor simulator into the plug and then put everything back up into this pocket. With everything neatly tucked away, we can reassemble the three bolts. With the system fully tightened down, it's now time to get the car down on the ground and do the final adjustments on the tips.
we will repeat these steps on the driver's side as well. Now that we have the perfect tip fitment, the installation is complete. Thanks for watching, I hope this helps. Let's hear how it sounds. Thank <laughs> you.